G'day guys, welcome to part three on our three part series on the BMC Learner IQ. This is the best machine in Australia for under $1,000. In fact, you can pick up a whole package with mask, heated tube upgrade kit for $849 delivered. And you can also pay for this with Afterpay, which enables you to pay it off via four fortnightly interest-free installments. Now, in part two, we looked at the patient settings. That's if you wanna change things like the humidifier, you might wanna change the brightness of the screen, just basic sort of stuff. Clinical settings are a little bit more in depth. Um, this is where you can change things like the mode of the machine or things like relating to the pressure of the machine. So it's just a little bit more advanced, but uh, for some of you, it might be very handy um, and it, can, it just enables you to um, make the therapy a bit more tailored to your specific needs. All right, so in order to get into clinical settings, uh, as a little trick, we need to hold down the main knob and the ramp button simultaneously for about five seconds, and then boom, we're into the clinical settings. Now we just need to press this button, the main knob, one more time, and now we can rotate the dial down through the clinical settings and change anything that we require right down to home when we're finished. So let's go up the top and we'll start from the top and go down from there. So currently it's set the mode set to auto. If we click the button down and highlight it, we can rotate the knob and change it to fixed pressure or CPAP mode, but 99% of you are gonna want it in automatic mode as you bought yourself an auto machine to begin with. Um, so I'm gonna click that down again. Now the next four things down from there, we have the minimum auto pressure or the min APAP, the maximum ramp setting, the ramp P or ramp pressure, and then the max auto or the max APAP pressure. Now, it's probably easiest if I just explain how these four um, menu items relate to each other, basically just going through how they're set at the moment. So currently the way it's set, we have a ramp pressure of five. So this means that the machine is going to ramp up for five set from five centimeters, that's the bottom level. It's gonna ramp up over a set period of time, whatever you've set this time period to, it's gonna ramp up, so it's gonna go five, 5.1, 5.2, up to whatever the minimum pressure is. So over 30 minutes, the machine will go from five, 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, 5 5.4, all the way up to seven over that 30 minutes. Once that 30 minutes is up, the machine will then operate the pressure between seven, which is the min, and the max, which is 20. All right, it won't go below the seven and it won't go above the 20. And the auto algorithm, this machine will adjust right between there, depending on what's required. So between seven, the min, and the max, depending on what's required, depending on how you're breathing. If you're snoring and you're having a lot of apnea, the machine's pressure will increase. If you're not having much apnea and your breathing's good, the pressure will decrease. It will change over time, minute by minute throughout the night. Now, probably most of you are probably gonna have, I reckon, recommend starting with probably a min auto pressure of five, a ramp pressure of four, and you can leave the max auto at 20. Now, in the patient settings, you'll be able to change the max ramp, like the, the ramp time, depending on what you want, okay? Now, you can change the max ramp value here to 45, if you think you need a little bit more time to get off to sleep, okay? Now, coming so as it stands at the moment, over 45 minutes, it will go from four up to five, and then after that 45 minutes, it will go between five and 20. The algorithm will adjust between five and 20. Now, coming down, sensitivity, I recommend you leave it on four. This is how sensitive the machine is to your apnea and how fast it's gonna make the changes, okay? If you start to go down to three or two, um, the pressure's gonna the, the pressure's gonna change over a longer lag period, okay? You want it, you want it nice and sensitive to your apnea. Um, if you're finding the pressure fluctuations are a bit too quick, um, you might want to bring that down to three. Um, that means it's gonna be more a bit more gradual with the pressure changes. Uh, coming up now, we've got automatic on. That means you can put your machine on, your mask on, start breathing, and then it's just going to um, kick on automatically. It's gonna automatically start the pressure. Vice versa, we've got automatic off. We can turn that on, which means that we can just take our mask off and we don't even have to press the off button and the machine will turn off. It will realize that you don't have the mask on. Uh, we have leak alert. I reckon you leave leak alert off unless you're someone who's taking your mask off in the middle of the night. You might wanna switch that on, but majority of you just leave leak alert off. 
uh, your tube type, which we looked at previously in part two. Uh, res Slex, we've got that set to patient because that means you can adjust it yourself. I have the ability to lock you out of that by just turning it off, but um, we've got it here set to patient, which means you have the ability in the patient settings to change that. And then we've got back and home. So if we just go back, we can come down here and we've also got another spanner here. Now this, this is other things we can change if we want to. Um, look, you, you really don't need to change any of this sort of stuff, but it's just there. You can restore defaults. You can erase the data, um, that sort of a thing from here. All right, but we're gonna go back to home now. And that's the clinical settings. So it's pretty straightforward. As you see here at the moment, that ramp time's 10 minutes. So that means it's gonna go from four to five over 10 minutes. And then it's gonna go between five and 20, depending on what's required from there. Now, if we're finding that the pressure is getting a little bit too high for us over night time. What we can do is we can click this button and down here with, it's got the little pad of paper, that's your data here. If we click the button down and go to period and change that to, to one week. So it's gonna give you the averages based on one week. If we come down here, um, it'll show you P95, we can use whatever that number there, that P95 number is, whatever that number is as a guide as to where we should set our maximum pressure. So we can then go, so say that P95 pressure after a week, this machine hasn't been used, that's why it's zero, zero, is 10 centimeters. We can go back, um, and I'll just get out of this. So we can go back into the clinical settings now. We've seen that the P95 was 10 over a week. We can click in here in the clinical settings, go back to the max, uh, the max pressure, click that and bring that down to 10. Lock that in, go back down to the bottom and go back home. So what that means now is um, the machine only has the ability to go above 10, but we know from the data that for 95, in order to treat 95% of your sleep apnea, the machine was at 10 or under. So we're still, by having the maximum pressure at 10, we're still able to treat 95% of the sleep apnea you're having without the pressure going too high and waking you up and disturbing your sleep. Anyway, that's part three. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, you can put them in the comments section. Um, I'll also put a link in the detailed description of the video as to where you can pick up this machine if you want to get a great deal. And um, it's a small business and it's a great company. All right, thank you, bye.